Hello and welcome to another video. Now I've had a few Sahara Gaming PC cases in the past for review and I've always been impressed by the general quality of them and I do quite enjoy building in them. For example, I've got my own video editing PC in a Sahara C500B somewhere over there behind me. So when they contacted me and told me they had a mechanical gaming keyboard coming out, I was intrigued. And here it is. This is the Sahara Gaming R20 10 keyless mechanical gaming keyboard. So let's get it out of the box and let's have a look. So in the box you get the keyboard itself, a keycap puller, a switch puller, and a user manual. Now looking at the keyboard, as I said, it's a 10 keyless design, meaning that there's no keypad on the right hand side. Now this is great if you need a compact keyboard where you haven't got much room on your desk. So looking around the back, the back plate is made from a decent quality plastic and it has several rubber feet to stop it sliding around your desk. There are two stand legs to change the angle of the keyboard. Again, these have rubber feet and well, they're quite chunky and the keyboard feels rock solid. The angle of the keyboard when they're up on the feet also does feel very natural to type on. Coming from the back, the USB cable is 1.8 meters long. It's braided and it has a gold plated USB connector on the end. Now you can route the cable through either of three channels on the back so it will come from the left hand side, the right, or the center of the back of the keyboard. The top plate is a black brushed aluminium and it's an open deck design, so the keys sit on top of that. You can see the mechanical switches underneath, but as they're white, they generally just reflect the RGB. For the UK version I've got here, the keycaps are double shot ABS plastic and the font used is really nice, totally legible, and the keys do feel and look of a premium quality. The spacebar has the Sahara logo emblazoned on it, while the only thing I found a little hard to get used to was having the numbers above the shift symbols across the top row of keys. For example, the asterisk is actually under the eight on the key. Now this has been done obviously as the LED beneath each switch is positioned at the top. And this makes the numbers stand out more when they're lit up in RGB. Now that's in no way a bad thing, it's just something that my 40 something brain has had to get used to. The function keys across the top and the keys down the right hand side all have secondary functions too. With the F keys including media functions such as play, pause, skip forward and skip back, and then there's keys for volume, email, internet, calculator, and a macro key. Now that is programmable in the bespoke software for the keyboard. The secondary functions on the keys on the right of the keyboard are predominantly to do with the lighting effects. Now they allow you to change to a plethora of effects without using the software. But I'll go through the software shortly. Now the mechanical switches are Otamu brown switches, which do feel and sound very similar to genuine Cherry MX brains I've used in the past. And they're rated for 50 million keystrokes. And this is how they sound. Both the keys and switches on the keyboard are removable and replaceable. The keys come away quite easily with the supplied keycap puller. Like so. Now the switch however is a different matter. You still get a puller to use but you have to use a little force to get them off and it takes a lot of wiggling. But they do come away eventually Obviously, if you're replacing a switch, it won't matter too much if you break it as long as it comes off and the connectors aren't damaged underneath. But if you do want to remove it for a little maintenance, just be careful not to get carried away. 
So let's have a look at the software and I've been very pleasantly surprised here. Now for all the function keys, including the ones that control the lighting, you can actually find out how to do all those either on the back of the box where it's all listed there or through the user's manual. So in here, if you look through, it gives you all the different uh, customizations you can do and all the macro keys as well. So you can see there, music player, decrease volume, increase volume, etc. Even got a calculator button. So looking at the lighting, you've got lots of different effects. I will go through some of these in a moment through the software, but you can see there we've got uh, wave mode, breathing mode, meteor mode. So let's go into the software now and have a look at it from there. Okay, so looking at the software then, we've got uh, a customized button where you can reassign keys to either a macro or uh, a mouse function perhaps, or some multimedia functions as well. And, and to create those macros, you come in here to the macros tab, and in here you can actually record macros and save them into there. So in the lighting tab here, you can see we've got the streamer effect going, and we can change the profile as well. We've only got one profile in. And you can set it so it switches off all light, lighting when your display turns off, so it's not left on uh, in a darkened room. You've also got a palette on the right hand side, so you can choose different colors for different effects. And here you've got brightness uh, speed. So let's, let's just turn the speed up of that and we can actually see it react on the keyboard. It does go through really quickly. You can see it flicking there on each one as it goes through. Let's put that back to the middle. Uh, on this one, you can change the direction so you can have it going upwards or downwards. Personally, I like it to go from left to right. And you can change the brightness too, right to the point where it turns it off. Okay, so that's the basics. Let's have a look through some of these effects. Now just stopping at this one, the reactive one, if I press a key, it then lights up in a different colour each time. Then water drop again, does the same thing, but it spreads out this time. As you can see, it's a different colour each time. Obviously, if you type in a lot, it gives a bit of a multicolored effect. Cross again does the same thing. Ripple. Again, reacts to the key presses, Aurora. Goes across. Heat map, starts off.
And then you can have custom ones as well. So if I choose a letter, I can put that to a specific color. So as you can see there, I've got the standard gaming keys of W, A, S, and D. So the custom mode also has templates. Now these range from MMO to CSGO. And let's have a look at FPS. And we'll switch it over to CSGO. And you can see there, all the pertinent keys are lit up. And you can actually change color as well. So there we go, that's blue and green. Okay, moving out to radar, and as you can see, that's a multicolor radar going through. And radar two. And you can actually set those to a single color as well. So there we make it purple. All right, let's have a look at heat map. Now this will grade between two different colors depending on how much you hit the keyboard so the more you do the brighter it gets if you go between a dark and a bright color and rain looking at rain again you can set that to an individual color or you can put it onto full color and so if you want it just one color go to static Turn off full color, and then you can choose whichever color you want to have it. And it's really nice. The RGB does look good. It doesn't shine all the way through the keys, obviously, with them being black, but it does come around the sides as well. So in summary, the Sahara Gaming R20 keyboard has really impressed me. From a relatively new company that to date has been specializing in PC cases, they have really hit the nail on the head with the R20. Now the price point is around £50 and I think that's pitched about right. In fact, I'd be tempted to pay a little bit more for it. The quality and features are definitely on point and the software does work really well. All in all, I'd give the Sahara Gaming R20 mechanical keyboard a big thumbs up and I would love to see a full-sized version with a keypad. So I'll leave links to the Sahara Gaming R20 in the description below so you can check one out for yourself. Thanks to Sahara for sending it in for review. But I also want to say a huge thanks to my current patrons and I'll leave links to my Patreon account in the description too where you can donate and join these lovely people in supporting the channel. And speaking of supporting the channel, why not pop along to our Teespring store and check out our cool merch like the t-shirt I'm wearing in this video. Don't forget to give this video a like if you liked it. Got loads more videos coming very soon. Best way not to miss any of those is to subscribe below. It doesn't cost a thing. And if you click the bell notification icon, then you'll be told every time I upload a new video. Speaking of new videos, why not watch one of our other videos on the left hand side of the screen right now. So thanks for watching and I will see you later.